What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys an anime movie deck that I've never really brought on the channel myself before and this deck is actually tailored to beat today's metagame. Yes, it's still a rogue tier deck. Never take these deck profiles and be like Spanko said this is a meta deck. It's not a meta deck. However, it's an anti-meta deck and the deck that I'm talking about is Malefic. I think this deck is really cool because it has some really powerful monsters that when you simplify the game state down to a simple I attack you and my monsters are bigger than you then you're gonna be winning and that's the whole purpose of this deck So if you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content Just like this one we upload five days a week here on Spanko deck profiles like this one But we do combo videos dual replays product openings all that good stuff You'll find it right here on the channel So make sure you guys are subscribed to stay tuned into all of that. I'm really excited to be bringing Malefics to the channel I think this deck is really really cool and I think some of the cards in here are really cool as well So with that being said, let's Let's get right into the deck profile. So I'm really excited to be doing this deck profile because I always thought Malefic was a really, really cool deck. Yes, it's a rogue tier deck. However, I think this deck is still really, really fun. And it's definitely a different concept that Yu-Gi-Oh took that hasn't really come up ever again. Now, I think this deck low key can be kind of funny in today's format. Big shout out to Sean because Sean is actually the one who asked me to put together a profile. And when I looked into the cards even more, I was like, wait, this is kind of interesting. So for that reason, I'm going to get right into the deck profile. I'm really excited to be sharing it with you guys. Keep in mind, it is a rogue tier your deck. I'm not saying this is going to be a meta competitive deck. However, if you do want to play Malefic and be able to compete to a certain extent with the meta, I think this is the way you want to go about it. So let's start things off with three Malefic Paradigm Dragon. This card is insane right here. This card essentially replaces a Synchro Monster, the original Paradox Dragon. This is a 4,000 meter for you. And if I didn't mention it already, this deck is just beat down dot deck. So how this deck wants to play is stun your opponent out of the game and then beat them down with big monsters. That's really what you want to do with this deck. And that's that's why the way it's built you guys are going to see it's built to pretty much just stun play floodgates and then just have big monsters on your side of the field paradigm dragon is that big monster for you essentially one of the big monsters for you that can help you push for a lot of damage so that's why you're playing the three malefic paradigm dragon then we're playing just the big beaters and the best malefic cards you guys can play three malefic cyber and dragon the reason you're playing the three cyber and dragon as well as the three stardust dragon not even because of their effects they don't even really do anything that crazy for you but the thing is they don't use main deck monsters unlike malefic rainbow dragon on malefic blue eyes those cards require main deck monsters which are just bricks in your deck which you don't want to play so you're playing these ones specifically because they only use the extra deck and you're just going to be summoning out the big bodies i mean cyber end dragon is a 4k body for you as well as your paradigm dragon stardust is 2500 which is really nice so that's why you're playing these ones essentially just to play the beatdown strategy now keep in mind all the malefic monsters have the same effect where if there's no field spell on the board aka the one that you want to get into which is malefic world they'll all get destroyed so this whole deck really wants to get to malefic world they also all have have the same effect where essentially you can only control one malefic monster on the board but you have a really cool spell card which ties this deck together which lets you summon multiple of your malefic monsters then we're playing three of the malefic parallel gear this card is really nice because it lets you use malefic monsters from your hand and then you're playing three malefic paradox gear which essentially helps you get to your parallel gear as fast as possible because you contribute it from your side of the field to do that so this card is really really powerful in that sense and then on top of that it has a really cool graveyard effect where if you want to use a malefic monster to banish a monster to special summon itself what you can do is banish this card from your graveyard instead so it becomes really cool in that sense i really like the three paradox gear you definitely want to be playing three and of course you're playing three malefic world this deck honestly does kind of live or die by the malefic world being on the field as well as another card that we're going to get into in a second but malefic world of course is really really important during your draw phase it also lets you add a malefic monster rather than having to draw a card which is really nice because if you do need a monster to your hand again it's a beatdown strategy you're always pretty much going to be guaranteed that monster so we're playing three malefic world as well as one malefic divide divide is pretty much a monster reborn a quick play monster reborn that you can play in the battle phase this card is also really cool because in combination with a spell card that i'm going to show you guys in a little bit this card becomes really powerful because it's just a quick play battle phase mechanic where you can summon it and then you can attack in the battle phase and then your opponent really won't have a response for it on top of that it does get banished during the end phase however if you have something to synchro summon away with let's say something like a malefic parallel gear then you get that monster off the board so you're playing like the one monster reborn essentially the one terraforming of course for your malefic world but you're also playing three malefic territory this card ties the entire deck together so the way it does that is it actually has multiple effects which i'm going to read out to you real quick or just give you a quick synopsis because this card is really important to the deck you really want to see this card as fast as possible the first effect pretty much says that you can activate a malefic world directly from your deck so it bypasses ash because it doesn't add it to your hand it activates it directly and then another effect that it has is essentially your opponent cannot target cards on the field on either field while malefic world is in your field zone so that's really cool and then on top of that you can control one of each malefic monster 
by name. So the Malefic Monsters all say that you can only control one Malefic Monster, but this card lets you control one of each name. So now you can have a Paradigm plus a Cyber End Dragon on your side of the field just with this card being active. And then lastly, the Malefic Monsters have an effect that during the battle phase, only one monster can attack. However, during the battle phase, Malefic Territory actually negates your Malefic effects, which means that you can attack with all your Malefic Monsters. This card is insane for the deck and you want to get to this card as fast as possible. One of the cards that helps you do that is your Malefic Selector. Malefic Selector says that you can banish two Malefic cards from your graveyard and then you can add two Malefic cards from your deck to your hand. So this card is really cool in that sense. It does help you get to territory. But another card that helps you get to territory and that's very important is Pot of Prosperity. This card, you're always going to be wanting to dig six for this. And the reason for that is because you need to get to your world. You need to get to your territory. Once you have that set up and you have a couple floodgates that I'm going to talk about in a little bit set up, you're pretty much going to be winning the game because you're playing big, big beaters that your opponent most of the time won't be able to attack over. Your opponent won't be able to target them. Your opponent will be floodgated out of their deck essentially. So they won't be able to play the game in that sense as well. So that's why your prosperity is really important because it gets you to any missing piece that you're missing essentially with your hand. And then you're playing the one call by the grave, of course. We're playing three skill drain as well as three goes in match. I do want to talk about the floodgates just a little bit because of course the format is changing. We're into the tier Ishizu stuff and I know that's going to be the best deck of the format. So there are things you can do. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. But before we do, we are playing three skill drain, three goes in match. Goes in match is just like the better one just because they're all dark monsters. So it's easier to play. But the thing is cyber and dragon is a machine versus paradigm and your stardust, which are both dragons. And then your gears are also machines. So playing rivalry does kind of get weird because there are situations where you essentially can't have cyber and dragon and a paradigm or cyber end and a stardust on your side of the board so that's why i'm not playing rivalry in the main deck however it is an option for you i'll get into that in just a second but goes in match just makes sense because all your monsters are dark oh one more thing i wanted to mention just before we continue i'm sorry for forgetting but if you guys don't have access to prosperity don't worry you guys can play a lure of darkness as well the really cool thing is again i just said all the monsters are dark monsters so if you guys don't have access to prosperity i know prosperity is kind of a pricey card kind of an expensive card so for that reason you guys can actually just play a lure of darkness over the prosperity just wanted to give you guys that option as well so then yeah we're playing the goes ends but we're also playing the bestials the bestials are also dark monsters which is really nice because it works with goes the match it's effectively a hand trap when you're forced to go second against a tier limit matchup but pretty much against any matchup these cards are really good so we're playing the three magnema as well as the one druid worm these cards are essentially hand traps for you you guys can see we're not really playing any hand traps in the deck however i will say this if you guys don't want to play the bested engine i really believe the bested engine is very important in today's format helps you get the tier limit matchup helps you have more big bodies on the board which is really really nice but if you guys don't want to play this or you guys don't want to play like let's say the goes in match or like you know different situations arise depending on where you go to locals keep in mind that my deck profiles are really tailored to beat the metagame but everyone's locals is different my locals has a lot of tier limit players so i would build my deck to beat tier limit but if you go to a locals and your locals is filled with you know sprite players and you would probably want to build the deck to beat sprite so just keep that in mind i think the thing is though with this deck i want to mention is that the core of the deck will not change everything up until the called by the grave i don't think will change even the skill drains i would honestly keep those in because skill draining your own malefics is also really powerful this card i would keep on up to here I don't think I would change. After here is where I would change depending on what your locals is. Now, what would I change into? Rivalry, like I said, is another option for you. But again, it does lock you out of your machines and your dragons. However, the Bisted monsters are dragons. So technically, if you're playing rivalry, you can at least have your dragon Bisted monsters as well as your Stardust, as well as your Paradigm Dragon. So that's another option for you. Another real cool option because Tier Limit Ishizu is going to be so prevalent and so powerful is your Soul Drain. Soul Drain is such a good card. This card says that monsters that are banished as well as monsters that in the graveyard cannot activate their effects so it's not just monsters that are in the graveyard it's also monsters that get their effect when they're banished which is really really powerful so if you guys want to play this or you guys can side it keep that in mind when you guys are going to a locals or going to an event there's a side deck so you guys can side deck this you don't have to play it in the main deck you can play it in the side deck and this card of course is very very powerful i just wanted to show you guys different options different texts that you guys can put in the main deck but you can also just have these in the side deck as well you don't have to have them in the main deck you can have them in the side deck as well but that's it for the main deck it is a 40 card main deck here i wanted to show you guys some different options i think this deck is really really consistent keep in mind three malefic world three territory we have terraforming we have this to get to a malefic territory we have our prosperity to get to a malefic territory we're always going to be getting cards in our hand which is really really nice i wanted to make it as consistent as possible so then for the extra deck here i don't want to go too much in depth with it because it's very simplistic you're playing two paradox which you're going to be sending for your paradigm dragon paradox you're never really going to be going into itself so you're just going to be sending this a lot of time stardust for the stardust dragon of course cyber end for the cyber end dragon of course this is all very standard stuff and then again keep in mind that your malefic paradigm is a level 10 your cyber end is 
is a level 10, your star disc is a level 8. So what does that mean? It gives you access to level 12 and level 10 synchros because you have stuff like your Malefic Parallel Gear, which is a level 2 tuner. So for that reason, you guys can play Geo Math Mech Final Sigma. It's a level 12. That's kind of just the towers for you, which is really nice. You have Baron de Fleur. I know Baron de Fleur is kind of a pricey card. You guys, again, don't have to be playing this. A lot of the time, you won't even be going into your extra deck that often. I just want to give you guys good options, right? Baron, of course, is one of the better options. You're playing the one Cheng Ying. Cheng Ying is really good. It does help you go for game as well. If you don't have Baron, by the way, you guys can also play Long Yuan. I don't think Sinister Long Yuan needs a Worm Monster. I think it's generic as well. So you guys can play Long Yuan, but double check on that. I'm not sure off the top of my head, but if you guys don't have a Baron, I'm pretty sure you guys can play Long Yuan. And then we're playing the one Time Lord. Again, just different options for you to play. Nothing you're really going to go into that often. Same thing with these ones. We're playing the Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon, Gustav Max. It's to do some burn damage. It's actually really nice in time sometimes. Then you're playing the Libe. Libe is another cool card that can help you push for game. You're playing the Pain Gainer, the Seven Sins, as well as the Zeus, which you can sometimes go into. Again, rarely you're going into this. Honestly, most of the time, if I'm going Prosperity, I'm banishing one, two, three, four, five, six. Like all the time, I'm just banishing these six just to get into whatever cards I need because your main deck is really powerful. You're playing Floodgates, you're playing Big Beaters, and that's what this deck is. It's just Unga Boonga Beatdown. That's, that's really what it is. So again, it's a rogue deck. It's not a meta deck. However, it is built to combat the meta. So I think you guys should really try it out for yourselves. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That was my take on Malefics for today's format. Now keep in mind, this format is a tier zero Ishizu tier format, and that makes it pretty difficult to play. So I did give you guys a main deck, but I gave you guys some really cool side deck options or cards that you could actually just stick into your main deck so that you can beat the meta game. So this is an anti-meta deck. And if you guys did enjoy, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! videos just like this one. We upload five days a week here on Spanko. Deck profiles combo videos, dual replays, product openings, all that good stuff, you'll find it right here on the channel. One more thing I want to say just before we head out is if you guys have any suggestions, again, the Spanko Squad grows together as a community. The way we get better together as a community is by leaving our suggestions, our opinions in the comment section down below. So if you guys have any suggestions or you guys have any opinions or ideas to make this deck even better, let us, let me, and everyone else know in the comment section down below. And maybe we can even make the deck better. So with that being said, thank you guys all for watching. With that, Spanko signing out. Peace.